four. Very familiar verses of Scripture. We'll be hitting a few of these. Uh, many of you have seen these before. And this is repetition. Repetition is the key to learning if you don't know that. And, uh, and look at 1 Peter. Get you 1 Peter in the other hand. And we'll look at something and say, Preacher, what's the big deal? Uh, what is the big deal about the Bible? Well, you go to the bookstore and you'll find out what the big deal is. Uh, you go to the bookstore, you walk in, and this is just all you have to do. You walk into any Bible bookstore you want to go into, you walk in and say, uh, Clerk, I would like to have a copy of God's perfect, inspired Word of God. And see what they'll hand you. And uh, what they'll try to do, they'll try to get you to buy just the newer, the one that's come out last, or uh, this new particular version, or uh, this one here. And uh, I've done this before, and it's real fun. I said, no, no ma'am, you don't understand. I, I'm, wanting the, I'm wanting the Word of God. Well, we have several here. No, I'm looking for the one that's perfect, without any mistakes in it, without any error whatsoever. Well, all of these over here on the shelf are different in their own way. And you're just going like this around here. Yeah, it is a big deal. Uh, it, it's a very big deal. Uh, and so Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is quick. That means it'll cut, it'll make a lie, and is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Notice the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now go over to 1 Peter real quick. 1 Peter 1 and verse number 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. So that means there is a perfect Word of God. If there is a corruptible one, there is an incorruptible one. By the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Right. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been saved, that Bible right there says, the Word of God liveth and abideth forever. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that today, in, in 2011, we can, according to God, if, unless God is a liar, right, right. unless God is a liar, I can go over to a bookshelf and put my hands on the perfect Word of God that God has sent down from heaven in the English language right. for me to read and for me to know that that is directed from Him. Amen. Yeah. It lived and abided forever. Now, I got into a conversation with a man who wrote the, actually the article that uh, we shared with you last week. Uh, his name was David Miller. And uh, I'm going to send him a copy of this uh, uh, CD and the DVD because I went onto his website after he uh, made some remarks about retiring the King James Bible. He said it was old uh, uh, Elizabethan English and it needed to be retired. Uh, it's uh, 400 years old and it needs to be retired. It's old. It's uh, antique. Uh, and uh, I said, so is Shakespeare, but they still teach, teach that in school. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, and uh, before long, they are going to get rid of the Constitution, I think. Uh, but it's old and it's, it's antiquated and we don't need it anymore. And uh, so I got on his website and began to post what I believed about the Bible. And uh, I got kicked off. <laughs> and uh, I made a phone call to him and we uh, corresponded by email and we had some heated discussions about the Bible. And he told me this. He said, uh, you are ignorant and unlearned if you believe that God has preserved His Word in the English language. He said, the only thing that is inspired is the original autograph. That means what Moses wrote on, which is lambskin or some type of a papyrus or uh, the paper that is long disintegrated and gone. 
He said uh, the only thing that's inspired was what Moses wrote on it, what uh, uh, David wrote on it, what Solomon wrote on it, what John wrote on it, Peter, and so on. That was the only thing that's inspired by God. Once it gets to the English, uh, you have to know Greek and Hebrew yeah. to be able to understand. I said, well, why didn't God just leave it in Greek and Hebrew? And I would have learned Greek and Hebrew, so I would have been able to read the Bible. God give it to us in English so we can read it. And so it is a big issue. And, of course, I can't, I'm no longer allowed to post on his site because he's got me blocked unless I come up to your house and get on your computer and he doesn't know that I'm coming through your computer. And, uh, and, but he's got my computer shut out and blocked so I cannot post on his site anymore. I mean, he's a nice, upstanding uh, man, uh, 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 gentleman uh, that is ignorant and unlearned. And this is what I ended our conversation with, and I'm going to go on with the presentation. We'll go on. I'm just getting a little uh, mad. Uh, every time I think about his name and see his face on my screen, I get mad. But I said this. I said, sir, I hope and pray that God did a better job in preserving my salvation than he did the Bible according to you. I said, do you believe in eternal security? He said, I sure do. I believe we're saved, sealed, and uh, to the day of redemption. I said, how do you know? Well, the Bible says so. I said, well, I mean, it, 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 which Bible do you talk about? How do you know John 3, 16 ain't right? How do you know Romans 5, 8 is correct? Well, you have to know Greek and Hebrew to know which is right. So, it is a big deal. Uh, do we have a perfect Bible today? Yes, we do. And here's where it all started. It starts with the attack of the Bible. The devil has been doing his job since way back in Genesis chapter number 3. Genesis chapter number 3, you don't have time, we don't have time to look at it. I'm going to run through this real quick. And you may want to write these verses down and look at them. Genesis chapter number 3 is the first Bible conference uh, that was ever in the Bible. Satan and Eve hosted uh, the first Bible conference. Uh, in the Bible, five steps in reversing God's Word. Number one is questioning the Word of God. You remember what Satan said in Genesis 3 and verse 1? Yea, after God said, did God really say what He meant? Have you ever heard a preacher get in the pulpit and says, well, what God really meant to say right here? No, I think God said what He wanted to say in, uh, in black and white right there. Just read it and believe what He said. Satan's going to come around just like he did Eve. Eve, uh, God told Eve, don't you eat of any tree, uh, or you can eat of any tree here, just don't eat of that one over there. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan comes around and goes, did God really say that? Did he really mean what he said? I mean, come on, Eve, you're uneducated and unlearned. You haven't been to the seminary like I have. That's right. God, really, you need to be smart like me. You've got to have a certificate hanging on the wall yeah, before yeah. you can know what the Bible really means. No, all you've got to do is know how to read plain English. Yeah. Questioning God's Word. Yeah, God said it. How do you believe God really said that? Of course, that's the first thing God did. Number two, He subtracts from the Word of God. Verse number two, He says, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh, or excuse me, Eve said that. And she removed the Word freely. God says you can eat freely. Amen. Eve, when she quoted what God said, she removed the word freely. So that means what? Do not subtract from the word of God. Right. You know what freely is? That's grace. Yeah. Amen. Freely. God's grace is freely extended to it. That's grace. You remove grace, we're in trouble. Right. Number three, she added to, or excuse me, added to of the word of God. What she did, she said, you should not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it. Right. God didn't say anything about touching. Amen. God didn't say anything about touching. She added that because that's what they taught her in seminary. Right. Uh, Amen. That's what God really meant to say was you can't eat it or you touch it. God didn't say anything about touching it. Uh, completely changing the Word of God. Verse 3 says, Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Right. Now you say, Preacher, what was that talking about? Well, the Bible says, Thou shalt surely die. 
On the right. day you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. That's what God said. But Eve, when she was telling the devil, lest you die. You said, right. what did she say? Well, this, here we go. I'm going to take an umbrella outside, lest it rain. In other words, I don't know if it's going to rain or not. I'm just going to take an umbrella just in case. Right. Lest you die. Uh, say, I really don't know if we're going to die or not. I'm just, I mean, I don't know. But lest we do, we're not supposed to touch it. Lest we do. I don't know if we will or not. God said we would, but I don't know if we will or not. Well, that's very important. Number five is denying the Word of God altogether. Ye shall not surely die, but God says they would. And that is five steps in reversing God's Word. It's very important. Did you know in Luke chapter number 8? In Luke chapter number 8, Jesus gives us the parable of the sower. And this is what He said in Luke chapter number 8. Now, tomorrow night, I'm going to start with this right here. And it's going to take me three nights to do all of this. But I'm giving you the crash course real quick because some of you have been over this before. But write these verses down. Luke chapter number 8, the parable of the sower. He gives this in verse number 11 and 12. He says, now the parable is this. The seed is the Word of God. Right. And then in verse 12 it says, then cometh who? Yeah. The devil. And taketh away the what? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you think the devil is going to leave the Bible alone? He's not going to leave the Bible alone. He didn't leave Eve alone when God said he changed everything that God said and changed it around to what he wanted her to know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the seed is the Word of God. Then cometh the devil to take away the Word of God. He is doing his job and he's doing it real good. He's taking the Word of God away from our churches and out of the pulpits. The seed has been sown so many years where they had great revivals. Back in the Welsh Revival in 1904, the 1800s Revival with D.L. Moody and, 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 and Spurgeon and all of them. Revivals. Why? Because they had one seed that they were planting. Amen. But after 1881, you won't hear about any worldwide revival because Satan has come in and removed the Word of God. That's right. And taken away the Word. Well, here we go. The first fact you need to know is this. God is perfect. Amen. God was perfect. God will be perfect. If God at any time failed in being perfect, then He was never perfect to begin with. Perfect cannot fail. Amen. All right. Well, let's look at this. The fact, second fact you need to know and understand is Moses was the first writer. And God used in the first five books of the Bible, God used Moses like He used a pen. That's right. Uh, God had Moses write exactly what God told him to write. Amen. Well, you need to know this. The Apostle John was the last writer God used to write the Bible. God used all about 40 writers uh, roughly there over a span of about 2,500 years. Like, and he used them like he used a pen, like we use a pen. And God had them to write exactly what God said and God told them to write. Amen. All right. Now, here's the third fact you need to understand. There are three languages that the Bible was written in originally. Uh, one of them was Hebrew, yeah. and the, the other was Aramaic, and the other one was Greek, yeah. the common language of the day. The Old Testament, the majority of it was written in Hebrew. Did you know this? In Hebrew, there were other people speaking other languages in the Old Testament other than Hebrew. There were people, Egyptians, they spoke Egyptian. Right. Yeah. Did you know what they had to learn if they wanted to read the Old Testament? They had to learn Hebrew. God give His Old Testament to the Jewish people in the Hebrew language. And if you wanted to read the Old Testament, you had to learn the Hebrew language. Yeah. Right. In the New Testament, God wrote it in Greek, Koine Greek, the common language of the day. He gave it to the Gentiles, uh, or the church, uh, the, the, the Greek-speaking people. I did give the New Testament in Greek, the majority of it, because if you wanted to know what God said in the New Testament, you had to know Greek to, to know what He said. That's right, man. Well, guess what? In 1611, yeah. Yeah. English was in its purest form. That's back when ain't wasn't in the, in the dictionary. 
Now, now you'll have you'll have ain't in the dictionary, and they give you a definition of the word ain't. But back in 1611 is when the English was in its purest form, and that's when the King God super, uh, superintended the whole thing. Amen. And orchestrated the whole thing. Folks, we're not talking about in 1611. You had just a few little preachers in Dyersburg, Tennessee, get together and say, "Hey, let's translate the Bible in English." Right. Oh no, my friend. We started out with 52, wound up with 47 of the most, uh, the most uh, theological, the most, uh, the, the smartest men that you could ever imagine. Right. We're talking about people that spoke fluently, wrote in, in, in wrote in languages that you couldn't imagine. Amen. Nobody today, nobody today has the intellect that those men had. Right. right. Amen. And they begin to translate the Bible into English. God, give us His Word in English. Y'all ready for this? Just like He did in Hebrew. Just like He did in Greek. Yeah. If you want to know what God says, guess what the, the, guess what the language of the world is today? It's in English. Amen. You don't believe that? Go to any airport. Go to the airport in China. You know what you're going to hear on the airways? They're going to give you those Chinese, but they're going to give you English. Amen. They teach their Chinese people, they give them English because they want them to know English. You know how our missionaries are getting over to the, to the China? It's teachers in the school system because they want their kids to know English. All right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I tell the missionaries, they don't agree with me, but you go to the mission field, I ask the gentleman, me and Brother John, I don't matter who else, Brother Russ, or somebody sitting around the table, and they said, we're going to take all this time, we're going to translate the King James Bible into whatever whatever language. And uh, we're going to give the Bible in their particular uh, language so they'll have the Bible. I said, well, how long is that going to take? He said, oh, well, about 10 years. Seven to 10 years, we'll get it translated. I said, how long would it take you to teach that same group of people the English language? Oh, it'd take us about two or three years to teach them in the English language. I said, it would sure be a whole lot better if you would teach them in two or three years the English language, give them the King James Bible, yeah. and they'll read the Word of God in English. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. A lot of people don't agree with that, and you don't have to either. You don't want to. The fourth fact you need to understand is this. I'm waiting until it comes up because I don't know what the fourth fact is. <laughs> God wants us to use... His words today exactly the same as He given from the time of Moses to the time of John. Amen. All right? Now, Matthew 4, 4 says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that right. proceeded out of the mouth of God. Is that what it says? Amen. All right? Now, God expects us to pass His words down through the ages, and enough of His words is everybody to have. If that's going to be the case, He must provide it. He must protect it, and He must preserve it. Amen. If God only inspired the originals, and He did not give us an inspired, preserved copy of, of the Word of God today, then His inspiration was a waste of time in the Old Testament. That's right. It's a waste of God's time. If He was only going to give it to them in uh, inspiration form and not pass it along, it was a waste of time for God to do that. All right? Proverbs 1.23 I will make known my word unto you. To one, receive my word. Now, why would God ask us to receive His word if the word wasn't made the word man? That's right. For four, retain my word. For twenty, attend to my word. Keep my word. John six sixty three. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Amen. Ain't that something? Well, here's something else. The fifth fact you need to understand, and that's this. God's Word is perfect. God's Word was perfect. God's Word will always be perfect. Amen. And if God's Word at any time failed in being perfect, then it was never perfect to begin with. That's right. Perfect can never fail. That's right. All right. Now I want you to look at your Bible. Uh, Deuteron well, you don't have to look at your Bible. We've got it on the screen. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 2. Uh, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. That's Old Testament. Proverbs 30 and verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. And thou, shalt, thou and thou, not unto His words, lest they reprove thee, and thou shalt be found alive. Now, Revelation chapter number 22 and verse number 18 and 19. 
Uh, now, let me say this. You may want to check it with your Bible. Just, uh, just because I put it up there, uh, I think it's the right verse. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto the things, God shall add unto him the plagues written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words the prophecy of this book, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Is that not plain? Deuteronomy says, don't add to, don't take away. Proverbs 30 says, the words of the Lord are pure. They're pure. Yeah, right. Revelation 22 says, don't add to, don't take away. Right. Are you going to lose some inheritance? Yeah. Right. You're going to lose some inheritance. And there's a lot of preachers, I think, would say, probably, but hey, they're going to lose some inheritance by adding to or taking away. That's right. Amen. All right? Y'all believe in a place called Calvary? Amen. Uh, the Bible says this, that when they come to the place which is called Calvary, you know what happened at Calvary? That's when your sins got forgiven. You know what? You won't find the word Calvary in the NIV. You won't find it in the New American Standard Bible. You won't find it in the English Standard Version. You won't find it in the Revised Standard Version. Y'all believe in remission, don't you? Amen. Amen. Hey, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You won't find it in the New International Version. Regeneration? Hey, folks, you know what regeneration is? Regeneration is being born again. Amen. You won't find that in the NIV either. You will find it. You will find the word Calvary. Now, what about the word blood? Yes. Are we not saved by Amen. blood? Amen. NIV will mix blood 41 times. Right. New American Standard, 39 times. New King James, 23 times. Uh, new Revised Standard Version, 46 times. <laughs> the New Century Version, omitted blood 157 times. The Living Bible omitted the blood 174 times. When you come to the word blood, they say, well, let's just leave that out. Question? Just a logical question. Let me ask you. If the blood saves, Amen. does the blood save? Yes. Then let me ask you a, just a simple question. Then who do you think would be responsible for for wanting to remove the blood from the Bible. God or the devil. Say well, There you go. You said it, I did it. Consider authorized King James Bible. 790,685 words. New International had 64,576 fewer words. I think Deuteronomy 4 2 said something about that. I think Revelation 22 said something about that. Uh, New King James, 19,755 fewer words. Revised Standard Version of 1881, 30,553, or 50, uh, 34, fewer words. All right, y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? Y'all can learn 17 verses in less than 10 minutes. You can do it. We can do it right now. You know what? If you've got an NIV Bible, those verses right there that are on the screen, right there, 17 of them, you can learn them. I know, them all, I know all 17. I'm going to quote them to you in the NIV. Matthew 17, 21. Matthew 18, 11. Matthew 23, 14. Mark 7, 16. Acts 8, 37. Are y'all ready to quote? I'm quoting them as they're in the NIV. 1 John 5, 7. You know what it says? There's yeah. three that I record in heaven. Amen. The Father. Hallelujah. Yeah. These three are one? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not in the NIV. You won't find that verse. You know how you memorize those verses in that NIV? You just go to them. Y'all not believing me. Here's an NIV. I got several over here. That's why they're on the floor. 
I never put these Bibles up there with my other Bible. Yeah. Let Rick, Rick, Rick here. Uh, take that. Look at Acts 8, 37. And tell me if it's in there. We won't type 17 with you. We don't have time to do a lot. Acts 8, 37. Read that, Brother Rick, from the New International Version. She's easy to upset about. What read? Can you read it? It's not there. Uh, is uh, thirty six there? And it, it skips. It goes from thirty six to thirty eight. Misses thirty seven. Not in there. You know how you memorize? Get you an IV, and you can memorize seventeen verses in less. Two minutes. Try it. Now some of y'all look at me like, Preacher, that King James, you bleed on that King James all the time, you all want King James. I'm telling you, anybody, do you know what Acts 8 37 says in the King James Bible? Verse 36 says, Hey, Philip, here's some water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Verse 37 says, If thou believest with all thy heart, yeah, thou yeah. mayest. Yeah. yeah. Who would want to leave right. that verse out? Yes. <laughs> now, brother, uh, he's up to <laughs> These kids are more spiritual than we give them credit. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Question, is heaven still up there? Is the earth still down here? It hadn't passed away yet, has it? All right. Then if that's true, my words shall not pass away. Amen. So until heaven is, uh, is gone and this earth is gone, His word is, go is, is going to be with us until heaven and earth pass away. Now that's Brother David Miller. I'll be the brother. That Dave Miller, yeah. he said, I quoted that exact same verse to him right there. And he said, that is not talking about uh, where God has promised to preserve His work. I said, well, what in the world is it talking about? He said, you have to know the Greek. I said, well, I, I know a little Greek. They run a clothing store and a pizza parlor. I said, all I know is Hebrew. Or, I'm sure, or English. What about the English? Hallelujah. Well, anyway, uh, here we go. Psalm 12, 6 and 7. If you don't have this verse memorized, uh, you ought to memorize it sometimes. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried the first of earth, purified seven times. Amen. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Keep what? Keep the words. Yeah. Thou shalt. Is that not plain English? I yes, failed sir. English, but I know that. <laughs> words of the Lord, pure words, silver tried the first of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, and a see it. The words, O oh Lord, thou shalt preserve them. Amen. Ladies, if y'all preserve something, you can it, you stick a seal on it, screw the lid down on it, and you preserve it. Right. That's what God did with His Word. Amen. Preserve them from this generation for how long? <laughs> Forever. That's what He promised to do. You know, that's how I know that Bible is true. Amen. I sure do. Now, King James. You know what the NIV does? Watch. Watch. Get this. Get it. I know it's a little hot in here, but John, you may want to crank them. There's that living. I don't know why it's hot in here. We just read the King James. NIV. Watch. The words of the Lord are flawless. Like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. Verse, six, or verse 7 says, O Lord, you will keep us safe and protect us from such people forever. Verse 7 of the King James says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, referring to the words of the Lord. In our base says, O Lord, you will keep us safe. Change the context completely altogether. Right. Y'all, hey, let me give you a little theology. You'll want to write this on your refrigerator. Things 
that are different are not the same. Amen. Amen. RSV, verse 7, Do thou, our Lord, protect us, guard us ever from this generation. Does it say the same thing? It does not say the same thing. Do you know people are reading that? And Brother Rick can check it out right there. He's got one. I've got a... Uh, here's the amazing thing. I'm afraid of that. Been able to do far. I have put my riches before. <laughs> Good news for modern man. That's a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 uh, What's the Jehovah's Witness, Daddy? You get one. Uh, mm. New America. Uh, what's it called? Oh, no, that's their magazine they put out. New World Translation. Thank you. New World Translation. I think I got one of those right here. Yeah, there's one of those. Uh, New American Standard. But here we go. Jehovah's Witness Bible. Did yeah. you know the changes that they made in the NIV and the RSV and several others? I just only had room to put those. Did you know they match? Yeah, that's right. The Jehovah's Witness Bible. They sure do. Now, you, I still, some of you are thinking, Preacher, what is the big deal? I mean, what's the big deal? The Bible's a Bible. Do you think a Bible is a Bible? Well, let's keep looking because we've got a few more minutes. You're wondering, this is what you've heard, hey, you've heard this. Well, the King James is hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just can't understand. I just, I just like something. <coughs> you know the whole scenario. I get some sick and tired of hearing that. Genesis 1 to 1, written on the fourth grade level. Malachi 1, Matthew 1. So all the way down. Look here, great level. NIV, written on eighth grade level. New Edinburgh, uh, there we go. Six point one seven. There we go. That's uh, done by whatever they do in the school system. Of how they. All right. Guess what? NIV is supposed to be better, uh, so you can understand it better. All right. Let's see. Here's the problem. People don't do what we're doing tonight. You probably, you won't hear this in a lot of churches. Right. Why? Because, just like a while ago, just a few minutes ago, I, perfectly, I believe God did that on purpose. Brother John quoted, uh, or hollered out a song, a page done. You people were in the wrong book. Right. But you know what he did? He straightened it out by saying, y'all get in the same book that I'm in. So yeah. we can all be in unison and all be on the yeah. same page yeah. and all sing and be real. Everything will be, it won't be any confusion at all. Yeah. I wish what would have happened is Mark went ahead and played and John had to, and they would have sung that and y'all would have sung whatever page y'all were on and we'd have been going. Why is it we ask our song leaders to make sure everybody's on the same page so they're saying the same words? But when the preacher gets behind the pulpit, he opens his Bible and says, Y'all open up whatever you want to. I'm going to reread down out this one. Y'all read out of whatever you want to. Try it. You don't sing that way. Try it. Or if you do, we wouldn't come hear you. It's just odd. It's just odd to me. All right. Ezra 9.5. The, 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 the King James, a, the authorized version, that's what it stands for. It, in there, the word says heaviness. The NIV changes it to abasement. Now, all right, just, just you may know what abasement is. It, it's heaviness. And you're going... Oh, praise your name, a big deal, means the same thing. Blah, blah, blah. What about your children? Sixth, seventh grade, whatever, 10, 11, 12, and they've been told the NIV is easier to read. Do you tell me which one you'd rather your kid, or even you, even me? I really, I know heaven is a whole lot better than I do a basement. <coughs> the AV in Isaiah 24, verse 23, confounded. Everybody know what confounded means? Yeah. What's abashed? <laughs> That's what the NIV says is a better rendering and it's easier to understand. 
See, they're lying to people. Amen. They're saying it's better to understand. Oh, we get rid of all of these old Elizabethan English words, and you'll be better understand it than I think. Well, when you put it down on paper and look at it, can you can you understand voice or acclamation better? What about story? That's pretty simple. NIV says changes it to annotate. They think annotations is better than story. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Amen. Change. Armaments. Armament sounds a whole lot better to me. Confound it or bewilderment. Strong. So many words I don't even know what they are. NIV, Exodus 35, verse 22, King James, A.V. says, bracelets. I don't even know what brooches is. Brooches is good. <laughs> See? I don't have any idea what a brooch is. Or a brooch. But I do know what a bracelet is. Yeah. Can somebody help me right back? Yeah. So, or have we determined tonight that the NIV is not easier to understand? Email. Like they have told you that it is. All right. King James Bible. You know this? Watch this. We, we just hang on. Give us a few minutes. Isaiah 7 4. It takes me three nights to do all this, but hang on. Jesus, do y'all believe Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. Okay. You know how we know that? It's because we have the final authority. Amen. You know there's construction workers in here, there's contractors in this room, and did you know what you know what constitutes a foot? Twelve inches. Try it. Is that pretty well standard? Try it. Uh, is there anybody that builds a house and you sub it out? And your standard is 12 inches to the foot, and your subs over here, they say, well, I'll be honest. I've come up with the times. I actually think 18 inches is a better foot. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it really don't matter. You build it on 18, whatever you think is best. I'm going to stick with the, the, the 12, and then we'll see what we come up with. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad Brother Don didn't do that in here. <laughs> I'm glad he knew what the standard was. Now, I said all that to say this. The reason we know that Jesus is the Son of God is because we have the standard. Amen. How do you people know there's a heaven? Y'all ever been there? How do you know there is one? How do you know that salvation is by the blood of Jesus Christ and that is the only way to heaven. How do you know that? That's what I tell these people. If, if we can't agree on the standard that we're going to argue on, it's like two people arguing over building a house. Somebody wants to build it with 18 inches as a foot, and the other guy wants to build it as 12 inches as a foot, and they can't agree on what the standard is. We can't go any further until we agree on what the standard is. Amen. Well, the standard is this. Isaiah 7 and 14, wherefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin. Y'all do believe Jesus is a virgin boy? Amen. Conceived by son, she call his name Emmanuel. RSV. Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive. Let me ask you a question. There's a difference in a virgin and a young woman? It's not the same thing, is it? I wonder who somebody don't believe in the virgin birth. RSV don't believe in the virgin birth. That's right. Luke 1, uh, Luke 1 34, then said Mary the angel, how shall these things be? Seeing I know not a man. You know what that means? That's right. That means you're the virgin. That's right. RSV, Mary said to the angel, how shall these things be? Since I have no husband. Is that the same thing or different? different? Things that are different are not the same. 
Somebody don't believe in the virgin birth. Well, here's a little more evidence. Uh, Luke 2.33, King James says, Joseph and his mother. You know why it says Joseph and his mother? Because Joseph wasn't his real father. That's right. Joseph didn't have anything to do. Yes, he was his earth, or his, or his uh, uh, I guess you could call his step, or whatever. He was a good dad to him. Let me just put it that way. But he didn't have anything to do with him being born. That's why King James says Joseph and his mother. And IV says his father and mother. Which means in the NIV, Luke 2.33 says this, and Rick can check it down there, he's still got the NIV down there, uh, his father and mother. You know what the NIV believes? The NIV believes Joseph was Jesus' father. There's the whole verse uh, there if you want to look at it in its entirety. The child's father and mother marveled. NIV says. King James says Joseph and his mother. There is a difference. There is a difference. Daniel 3 and 20. Y'all remember the story of the three Hebrew boys? That's right. Three Hebrew boys threw in three people. King goes over and he goes, Man, I thought we threw in three. I'm counting four. And the fourth appears to be the Son of God. Amen. Capitalized. Right. New versions. He changed, they change it to a son of the gods. Let me just, simple. It's simple. It's simple. Who would want to change all capital son of God to a son of the gods, lowercase? Who would want to do that? Not for one person. The seed is the word of God. And the devil came along and taketh away the word. That's right. There's the verse in its entirety. NIV, a son of the gods. New American Standard Version, a son of the gods. New World Translation on the very bottom. That is the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Look, it matches a son of the gods. Right. You know why the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that? Because they believe Lucifer and Jesus was brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that, and the NIV and the AFDSV believe the same thing. Yeah. Folks, I'll be honest. I know some of you may be getting tired of this, uh, and we'll be ready to go home, and we're fixing to. But I think I'm just going to stick with the old, the old yeah. 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 I think I'll be. Uh, Isaiah, uh, listen, this will make you mad before you go home. King James, Isaiah 14, 12. Out that fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Son of the morning. Son of the morning. Lucifer. New versions. Fallen from heaven, O morning star. Do you know what it says about the morning star in Revelation 22 and verse 7, uh, 16? Amen. It says Jesus is the morning star. Right. Amen. Making Lucifer and Jesus. Does that make you mad yet? Things that are different are not the same. This King James issue is more important than what we think. It's more than just Brother Jeremy. Just He just hollers about King James all the time. It's important to me because of that right there. Or that right there. Blood atonement. Colossians 1.14. King James Bible says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. New versions. Through His blood is out. Not in there. Hey, I got time. Hang on. It's just three minutes to seven. Hang on. How many, how many knows who killed Goliath? <coughs> how many knows who killed Goliath? Heaven, who killed Goliath? All right. David killed Goliath. Does everybody know that? In the NIV, 2 Samuel 21, verse 19. Elhanan 
the son of Jerry our origin. The Bethlehemite killed Goliath, the Gittite. I thought they would kill him. The kids know the King James. NIV says El Haman killed Goliath. And people, David Miller hadn't got a clue. His head stuck in the sand somewhere. Yes, I'm mad. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at all these buzzards that cause me uneducated to learn. And I am uneducated and unlearned, but I do know how to compare and read. All right, authorized version. El Hanan, the son of this, what the, the King James says, slew the brother of Goliath. You know what they left out in the NIV? The brother of is in italics. And they said the italicized words are not supposed to be in the Bible. So they took it out. And when you take it out, you mess the whole context right. up Amen. by messing the whole verse up. Right. Why? It don't matter if they're crooked. In your Bible, the words, if they're crooked, slanted, whatever, they're supposed to be in there. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. I ain't got time to prove to you about the italicized words, but give me... A few minutes and I'll wait if you want me to. <coughs> Y'all believe in hell? Amen. We're almost done. We're almost done. Y'all believe in hell? Amen. There is a place called hell. Deuteronomy 32, verse 22 says, Lo is hell. And I think changes it to the realm of death below. Second Samuel 22, 6, the sorrows of hell come past me about the cords of the grave. <coughs> Is that the same thing? Hell. Deeper than hell. Deeper than the depths of the grave. Let me let you know a little secret. You know what the Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. don't believe in hell. That's right. They believe when you're buried in the grave, that is all the hell there is. Yeah. So that's why NIV, I guess they like Jehovah's Witnesses better than they do God. Hey, look, look, look how dumb this is. How do you have saved loved ones? Amen. If this passed away, you put them out yeah. in the grave. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, is there a difference in the grave and hell? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You better hope the grave is not hell. Yeah. I've got some saved loved ones that we put in the grave. Of course, they're not there anyway. Their body is. Right. And that's why they ought to be present with the Lord. Amen. But if Jehovah's Witness is right, our saved loved ones are in the grave. They're in there. How dumb is that? That's very dumb. Well, we're almost done. Galatians 5 9, you know what it says? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of leaven will mess the whole thing up. You know what? I'm just going to stay with this one. Now, there's some other uh, parts to this, but tonight I'm done. Now, the other two nights I go into New King James and I'll show you the mark on the King James, New King James. That, the New King James has a mark on it. You'll see that mark right there, right there on the front of it. It's the same mark if you've ever watched the show Charmed. Uh, it's a uh, witchcraft show. That's right. Uh, this right here. Anybody know who P.O.D. is? You yeah. know P.O.D. Puke of something. What it means? Puke of... What's P.O.D. stands for? John listens to it. <laughs> um, P.O.D. The rock group. They're a bunch of warlords or something. They got this symbol on their album covers. It's on the charm, the, the, you know, the TV, the witchcraft show. All that stuff. It's on the New King James. Right there. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't make you real mad about reading who sponsors the New King James. But I won't do that. Some of you might like some of them men. They don't know any better. Some of them are dead. They know better now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you've got to decide whether or not you believe God has kept His promise. Did He preserve His word throughout all generations? Or did He not? You've got to believe that. Or decide which way you want to go. That's fine. It don't matter to me one, one way or the other. 
But I believe God has preserved His Word in the King James Bible. And that's why we believe what we believe in here in this church. Uh, and, and that's I want to show. I want to tell you why. It's one thing just to get up here on Sunday morning and say, "Hey, we believe this now. You ain't got, you know." And I have never said this community. They've heard a lot of stuff. I have never said if you don't have a King James Bible, you're going to hell. I've never said that one time in my whole life. Never said it from here to this pulpit. I've never said that you couldn't come in this church without a King. James. Never have said that. Bring in anything you want to in here. If you said visitors included don't make any difference. You know why? What I'm going to do? I'm not going to say a word about it. But one of the Sundays I'm going to turn to Acts 8:37 and preach from Acts 8:37. <laughs> and when they open up in Acts 8:37, they're not going to be able to find it. And I won't have to say anything about the King James Bible because they will come up to me after service and go, uh, "Brother, uh, Brother Jerry, my, uh, my, I didn't have that verse that you preached on today." And then I say, well, how about getting one of these that's, that's a real coat? Yeah, man. You've yeah. got a zero yeah. coat. <laughs> you have a diet coat. <laughs> you're, eating, you're drinking skim milk. That's right. How about let me convert you over to whole milk? <laughs> More importantly than even that, that Bible right there will show you how to be saved. Yeah. If you believe, death, burial, and resurrection, ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart, the heart matter, ask whosoever shall call upon them, Lord, shall be saved. That's what that Bible says. Yeah. Amen. You take it in. I'm glad He preserved His Word and gave us a copy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you bless the time together. Lord, it went a little longer tonight, longer than normal. May God, I pray that you take the information. Lord, deal with hearts and lives and people. God, we thank you for all that you do for us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Hold the building.